what got me interested in astrophysics is a uh, puzzle to myself because I can't really answer that question. I've never known a time when I wasn't interested in astrophysics. So I had a book when I was five, six, that got, and I was interested already at that point. So one of the things I've told my students is that um, I had tried to, um, I've tried to understand this question on mul multiple uh, occasions over the years. And I finally uh, tried out hypnotherapy. Now I have no idea whether hypnotherapy really works or not, but I thought, what the heck, let's, let's give it a try. And I've got the perfect question. What got me interested? So I go to a hypnotherapist, and of course they're interested in trying to get sports figures to go out and hit the home run you know, farther or whatever it is they're doing. And they don't generally address people who are curious about themselves at age five or four. But that was my question. And so the way that works is that you basically, they try to hypnotize you and then you try to connect with an earlier and earlier self and ask that earlier self for the answer. As far as back as I could go, it was six years old, and all I have is a six-year-old pointing back in time, and I could not connect to an earlier self. So the answer is I don't know. All right, so my uh, research focus uh, is, I've, I've got several um, areas of focus. Um, so I look at supernova, which, is, which are stars that blow up, and I look at um, short period interacting binary stars, and I look at galaxies. And the, all three of those areas are relatively related in the sense that you can go from one to the next and each one has an impact on the, on the one that follows it. And so I hadn't planned this when I was a, a graduate student, but it sort of worked out this way. And it's uh, it turned out to be kind of cool that wow, these things all connect up like dots and you can draw a line from one to the next and, and there really is a connection there. Now, why is it important? So let me just pick out one of these things. So uh, one of the things I've got some undergraduates working on right now are is the X-ray emission from spiral galaxies. So we've all seen those nice spiral galaxies with the, you know, the twisted arms and all this sort of thing. What we find in the X-ray band is um, points of X-ray light, small objects of some kind, and then we see an overall background or, or smoothness to the X-ray emission. And we don't really know where that comes from. And so one of the questions is, what is the origin of this hot gas? X-rays are very high energy photons. That means hot gas. So the hot gas has to come from somewhere. Hot gas doesn't stay hot unless it's kept hot. So the question is, what's keeping it hot? Now you can immediately think that a supernova, which are stars that blow up, when they blow up, they can power that hot gas. The problem we have is that you, it's very difficult to find a supernova until it goes off. And then by the time it goes off, it's too late to really study it as to how, you know, in terms of how it's contributing to this hot gas. But you can study star clusters. They're there for a long time. You can find them in the ultraviolet. You can find them in the radio. You can find them in infrared. And so what we want to do is basically use the, the infrared or the optical or the ultraviolet light from these clusters to see whether that matches up with structure in the X-ray band. And if it does, that's a clue. We also want to take the structure in the X-ray band and follow it back. Those two th things ought to lead to the exact same places. If they do, then star clusters are powering the X-ray emission. If they don't, we have a puzzle. So it doesn't really matter what the answer is. We're going to learn something either way. And so I've got some undergraduates, undergraduates working on this kind of problem. And we're sort of struggling with it right now, but yeah, it's science. <laughs> All right, the process by which we are going to try to answer this question really is to use images of these galaxies 
in the ultraviolet or the optical or the infrared, or in fact, all three, and then try to do a statistical matching to the X-ray data. And that's where we're struggling right now is because it turns out basically what we need is facial recognition software. And we don't have that. <laughs> so um, that should lead us to the uh, connecting infrared optical ultraviolet to the X-ray. Now we want to take the X-ray structure and go the other way. Because if you just go one direction, for example, if you say, wow, look, I've got some things here in the X-ray band, and they match up with this in the ultraviolet, you're not really answering the science question, which is, to what extent does every bit of structure here match up with something there? Mm -hmm. And so you really need to close this loop and do it both ways, because then you've answered the science question. There could be faint stuff in the infrared or the ultraviolet, for example, that does not match up with the x-rays. Then that suggests that there is a size parameter that comes in. You have to be a certain mass or a certain size cluster to make x-rays. That would be very interesting. And that's the kind of thing that we need. If you, all you do is look at the structure in the x-ray band and go this way, all you've said is, wow, okay, so a small peak here matches up with a peak there. That's not really answering the question. You need to close this loop. And I've emphasized that with the students, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to close that loop. There's been a lot of papers published in the, in the literature that have gone down that road, but we want this road too because that's the only thing that's going to address the question completely. What we're trying to find here is the, what, where is this x-ray, I mean, where are these x-rays coming from? The reason why that's important is because we see galaxies that are edge-on to our line of sight, and you see x-ray emission above and below the galaxy. Now, what, but that doesn't tell us where that gas is coming from. So if you look at a face-on galaxy, now you lose that third dimension because everything's you know, projected onto this galaxy. But it's really critical to know whether that gas is in the plane of the galaxy, in other words, you know, intermix, intermixed among all the stars there, or whether it really is above and below. If it's above and below, it's got to be lofted there. And if it's lofted, that implies there could be a flow out of the galaxy. And the reason why that's critical is that what we found over the past roughly 10 years or so is that if a galaxy has a flow out and that stuff goes, you gradually deplete the galaxy of gas. And if you deplete a galaxy of gas, you turn off star formation. And now the galaxy will die. Won't they? It won't be soon, so nobody has to worry about this. But effectively, that galaxy is going to be dead. And it might take a billion years, but uh, who cares? It's effectively a dead galaxy. The Milky Way right now is a very active galaxy. We're seeing, we see lots of star formation. So it becomes critical is, does that gas go up and come back down, or does it go up and keep going? And we don't know the answer.